My name is Khaled. I'm Zach. I'm Carlos. I'm Jillian, and this is Lab 1. A degree of freedom of a rigid body is an allowed motion, either translational on an axis or rotational about an axis. A rigid body in free space has six degrees of freedom, pitch, yaw, roll, and x, y, and z translation. Degrees of freedom can be constrained by applying particular contact points allowing for more specified movement. These principles were implemented in this lab in order to build optical systems and align components within said systems. So this is our um, aligned Heaney laser and our laser mount. So we have the red Heaney laser here. You can see as the pinhole goes all the way down to the end of the optical rail, um, our beam keeps coming through. So it is um, parallel to the optical rail and also it is centered because of the post holder and the iris mounting. Um, the degrees of freedom that we try to control here, you can see that we have the tip tilt and the um, Y positioning on this side over here, um, on this vertical part. And then we added X translation for another degree of freedom that we could control using this translation stage. Another way that we used to adjust to make sure that the laser was aligned was moving that pinhole as we just did previously, all the way down this optical rail starting from close up to this laser and then aligning here and then continually adjusting until we got to the end of the ring. In this next portion of the lab, we compared our reference frame of our laser guided system to that of a tray of water. This is done by introducing a beam of light onto a pentaprism that deviates the beam by 90 degrees and then reflecting off the tray of water and then re-entering back in our system. We can then check to see how deviated this is by looking to see how the return path is on the iris. What's not being shown here is our setup that we had with the water. However, on a comparison between the uh, beam splitter and the pentaprism, the pentaprism introduced a new uh, reference system, which was the water, which was referenced with the gra gravity. And that introduced a new system there. However, when we used the corner cube, we ensured everything was the same by ensuring that we had the same table, the same railings, and everything was on the same level. So when making that comparison, we can say that the beam splitter is probably the best comparison for us uh, to make sure everything was aligned. So whether we saw any differences between using the pentaprism and beam splitter, we indeed did because the beam, or the pentaprism was using the water as a reference system as um, we measured across, and the beam splitter is using the reference system, the whole table, and the optical railing and all the alignment we use. So. In terms of which we would use is we would use the beam splitter using the reference system that we desire. So the first part of this section we wanted to do was have another beam, a uh, green beam, be parallel to our red beam. So what we did here was we moved our post that we had originally to align our first beam over to the second one and we did the same test where we adjusted the positioning, the tips and tilt, and the positioning when it's close up to uh, the X and Y translation and then the angle positioning when we were further away to ensure that the beam was both parallel. That uh, in this process that we did was we wanted to do the co-alignment. So in order to do the co-alignment we had our beam splitter onto our second beam because our goal is to have them both uh, combine on this end and then on this end. For co-aligning the beams we made sure that the back reflections going onto the pinhole were correct on both the red and the green laser. The mounts we used for our prism and beam splitter are pitch and yaw controlled, so we can change those two respective angles as well as the Y heights between the stages and the prism. We made a Keplerian telescope using two plano convex lenses. For the first lens, we used the plano side to give a small back reflection back into the input output aperture of the laser, and use the convex side to get a larger beam spot, which was uh, then also used to line back into the output of the laser. And this process was repeated using, for the second lens, going back through where we used the pinhole to originally limit the size of the beam on the vacuum incident onto the second lens, so that way whenever we were aligned back on the laser, uh, we were able to have the smaller spot size there. We were able to check a collimation of our telescope by using the shear plate, which shows appearance patterns and when you know you're collimated if you're seeing the straight fringes as you're seeing. In the final portion of the lab, we constructed a microscope with a reticle at the intermediate image plane. The goal of this portion was to align the image of the reticle with the target on the screen opposite the laser. The laser beam path was aligned through pitch and yaw adjustments, and the reticle image was positioned using X and Y translation. We could not achieve the proper vertical alignment before lab ended due to the translation stage placed under the post holder the microscope was mounted on.